Hey everybody, Jack Clubs Painting here. Today we're going to do a full start to finish how to paint for Black Templars Space Marines. I get the question at least once every stream that I do, how do you paint black armor? So we're going to be doing a Space Marine Reaver on an Elric's Hobbies base. This is one of the brand new bases from their line. It's the Ruined City base. And we're just going to start off with some black Steinal Res Primer like usual. And when you're priming, you want to make sure that you're getting full coverage on everything, just making sure you can't see any of that plastic or resin show through. But you want to be careful because uh, with the airbrush, if you try to force that paint to do what it doesn't want to do, then you'll get some paint pooling. And then the air coming out of the airbrush will push that super wet paint out and spiderweb it, and it creates a really nasty look. So you want to be super careful about that. For our head here, since there's going to be a skin tone, I'm using some red-brown primer from Steinal Res. It's very similar to Beastie Brown and we're just going to cover up the head with that as the base for our skin tone. It works really good. And that's what I normally like doing for, uh, for skin tones. Now we're going to try out some Mecha colors from Vallejo. This is pure black. It's a really dark, satiny black. And I'm putting that over our black primer just for a better base coat of black on the model. The, uh, the black primer dries a little a little charcoal-y, um, not really what we're going for. I want a really rich, dark black for our base coat of the black armor, so that's why I'm trying out this pure black here. Alright, now we're going to Mecha Color Phantom Gray. This is a dark gray. I'm just going to mix it right into the airbrush cup with some of that watery, pure black still down in there to uh, help darken it up just a tad to help those two colors blend together and then we're going to do our first highlight on the black armor and this is kind of more important than our final highlight because you have to be very careful when airbrushing black armor like this because if you overdo it it's just going to look gray and if you underdo it it's not going to look right so you just have to find that kind of happy medium in between and get some light airbrush highlights where the light is going to start hitting that black armor and creating our highlights, uh, creating our gradient effect. And if you do it right, it'll read like black armor to the eye, but it's not going to just be flat black with an edge highlight. For our third highlight on the model, we're doing gray Z from Mecha Color. It's a little bit brighter, more of a medium tone gray. And we're just gonna use that as our little spot highlight. And you can see here, I'm not doing a whole lot with the paint, just finding some of those brightest spots on the model, like the top of the knee pad and the toe of his boot and right on the backpack. And we're just gonna, you know, hit those little areas. And then for the Black Templar's white shoulder pad field, I'm just gonna start filling in that shoulder pad field with our gray Z so that our white has something to stick to. And you just wanna make sure to be a little careful here if you need to use masking tape, you know, use masking tape. If not, then, you know, don't. It's it's entirely up to you, whatever you feel comfortable with. With this model, using the Sotar 2020, I didn't need to use any masking tape to stay within the lines on that big shoulder pad. Really the only part I had to be super careful on was where it was really close to that backpack exhaust bell. All right, now we're gonna start focusing on our shoulder pad. And I'm pulling out some Steinal Res white primer for this and just mixing in a whole lot of Flow Improver. So that way we have a really thin down paint and it's not gonna spatter or cause little dots of paint to show up. It's gonna go on really, really smooth. And you just gotta take your time because it's super thinned out. It's gonna take a really long time to dry. So you just want to hit a little bit and then give it some air to dry it out, hit a little bit more, give it some air to dry it out, and just keep repeating that until you build up 
your white field. And the way that I'm doing this is I'm kind of starting in the middle and then working my way towards that edge to make sure that I'm not going to like go over that edge by accident and then hit the black armor with that white paint because that would be bad. So we're just hitting that shoulder pad field, getting the white built in so that we got that nice black Templars, white shoulder pad field to black armor. Again, if you don't feel comfortable doing this without masking tape, feel free to use masking tape. It's just I've done this so many times that I'm used to how the Sotar performs, so I don't need to really use masking tape on it. Now we're going to start working on our head a little bit, doing our little bit of flesh tone. Starting off with tanned flesh from the Army Painter. Uh, I use this as most of my uh, kind of Caucasian style flesh tones. We go from tanned flesh to barbarian flesh like you're going to see in the video here. And I like to use lots of flow improver just to get that paint a little transparent so I can kind of feather it on there. Here we are the barbarian flesh. I'm just going to create a highlight, always spraying from kind of a top down angle to make sure that our underside of all those facial details still has a little bit of that brown showing through. Here's our base. I'm going to hit that with the phantom gray, just going around the edge. This is supposed to be ruined city base, so I assume all this is going to be some kind of, you know, concrete, asphalt kind of stuff underneath those flagstones. So we're just hitting the sides of that with the phantom gray, getting that all covered up. And then for our tile colors, I'm using model color buff. This is kind of a yellowy bone color that I like to use for the base of a lot of different things like bone, some tile, maybe a warm white, um, parchment, that kind of thing. It's it's a really, really good paint. I use it in a lot of different workups, but this is going to be the base color for our kind of ivory white tiles on top of this uh, ruined city base. All right, now we're gonna to go to our ivory, which is gonna be our brightest color on these tiles. And I'm just gonna hit these tiles kind of in the center and work my way out so that I don't spray ivory directly into those little dividing lines between the tiles, give those a little bit of contrast with the top. And out towards the edges, a little bit of that buff is gonna show through and give us some of that kind of color fade tile look that you'll see in a lot of floor tiling where the uh, stone is more polished in the center but it kind of fades out at the edges. And then just to give us a little bit of dirt, we're gonna do the uh, bare edges of this base with some charred brown from Vallejo Game Air. It's a really dark brown. It's gonna go over the gray really nicely. And that's just gonna be our kind of dirt underneath the concrete kind of color like that. All right, we're gonna put a wash over the flesh tone on our head using some Juichi Violet from Citadel purple wash. Uh, this is a really old school way of doing Space Marine faces where it gives them a really vibrant kind of almost flushed appearance to their skin and we're just going to very lightly put that over. We're not going to slop it on. We're not trying to darken our details too much. We're just going to get a little bit of that violet color in there. And when that dries, we're going to come back with the Barbarian Flesh with a lot of flow improver. We want this paint to be really transparent and just kind of feather it back over our face on top of that wash to give us a really nice soft appearance for our skin. It's very realistic. All right, now we're going to go to Scale 75 Black Metal for all of our metallic surfaces on the model. It's a really dark gunmetal color that uh, works great for almost any metallic in the 40k universe. I love using it. It's pretty much the base for all of my steel colors unless I'm going for something really shiny and chrome. So we're just going to hit all of his joints and his knife and stuff like that. And usually on Space Marines, I like doing all their joints as kind of a black rubber, but because this is a Black Templar model and his armor is black, I, we need some color separation. So that's why I use the steel. And then for some of the accent colors, we're using the Scale 75 Necro Gold, which is a really nice base black gold. Um, it's kind of dull it's still shiny but it, it does it does have kind of a dull finish to it I like using it for gold and brass in equal measures you just gotta highlight it up with different colors to get those two different looks but 
for all the all the fittings on his knife and his uh, sheath and little skull on his chest, we're gonna use that necro gold as a base color. Now we're going to work on our head a little bit more, and like I said, I do like using buff for a base of our skeleton bone. So we're going to do his bone mask as a warm white, almost like it's actually bone rather than something that was fabricated. I think that'll look good with the Black Templar's feel. So we're just going to block in the skull mask with that buff, get all that covered in. Okay, you can see that our skull mask is blocked in, and I went ahead and blocked in the silver metallic on his little respirator and his like helmet connector thing. And then we're just going to block in our hair with some matte black from Vallejo Model Color. Back to our body, we're going to start blocking in some of our secondary colors. Starting off with his little frag grenade, we're going to use some refractive green. That way it kind of looks like a frag grenade to the eyes. You can see it, pretty much everybody's mental image of a military frag grenade has that kind of OD green to it. So I'm using refractive green from Vallejo Model Color. It's basically what it is. Just military OD green, super easy. And then for his uh, gun fittings, we're going to use Prussian blue. Um, we could have left it black, but I wanted a little bit of complementary colors, you could say, to the rest of the model. So just for fun, we're doing the uh, heavy bolt pistol with some dark Prussian blue. It's a really dark royal blue color to fill in all those fittings on the gun. Alright, we're going to use some flat brown from Vallejo Model Color for all of his ammo pouches and his little uh, belt harness. Um, you see a lot of different colors for these, ranging from black to gray to military colors to leather. Uh, I think leather looks the best for really dark colors like this, it kind of stands out, whereas with brighter colors I kind of like to use black. But uh, since his armor is black, we're going to use some flat brown to base out the leather on all of this uh, tactical gear on his waist. And then for his uh, little crack grenade, I thought it would be cool to make the uh, pen and hand plunger for the grenade bright red. 
that way it'll stand out as two different styles of grenade. And of course we're going to get the uh, purity seal with some buff, it's a really good base co to color for parchment. Alright, now we're going to start doing some freehand, but I know freehand is kind of a scary word to some people, but it's really not as hard as you would think, first off. Um, basically, with any shape or number or letter that you're going to be doing, you just need to break it down into its constituent parts, which is usually a bunch of straight lines or some small curvy lines. So with this number two that we're putting on your shoulder pad, it's just a couple of horizontal and vertical lines and one kind of C shape, like the letter C. And you're just going to draw that on there. I recommend getting in, into practice using your brush at a full 90 degree angle to whatever surface that you're trying to freehand on. It's a lot easier to draw shapes with the brush that way rather than trying to use it at an angle like you're using a pen or a pencil. And what I like to do for freehand is first use kind of a neutral gray, uh, mid-tone gray, sometimes even a dark gray, depending on the surface, to kind of block in our colors. You can even go a step further and use something like a mechanical pencil to sketch out your idea first and then paint over that. And then once that gray is on there and dry, uh, I wanted all of our freehand stuff to be really bright white, kind of like you see on Black Templars. So I'm just using ivory to trace over those lines and fill in those details. So now we have a really bright white number two. And then for the white shoulder pad with the Black Templars Maltese cross, I'm doing the same thing. We have like kind of a neutral gray. I just dotted our center point and then I'm drawing an X through that and then turn it a 90 degree angle and draw another X to create the kind of triangular arrow shapes for our Maltese cross. And then what you want to do is at the point of that X, just create another smaller triangle inside for each one of our little points because it ends in kind of a forked tip at the end of each one of those triangles. And you can kind of see there, I'm just drawing in a third little triangle that connects in between the two. So you have kind of a little pinwheel effect going on within that Maltese cross with those bare lines. And from there, obviously, the Black Templar's cross is black, so I'm just taking some black from model color and very carefully just drawing inside the lines. That's all you really got to do. Uh, the hard part is creating the lines. The easy part is painting inside of them. And even I struggle with this sometimes. You know, I don't want to make it sound like any anybody can do it. It does take a little bit of practice, and, you know, even when you're painting inside of these lines, you might have kind of a wavy line or get outside of your line a little bit. You'll have to correct it, maybe uh, clean up those lines by painting outside of it a little bit. But with a little bit of practice, uh, really anybody can get this under their belt. It's, it's a lot harder just thinking about it and looking at it than actually doing it in practice. So don't, don't feel intimidated because if you just practice a little bit, you can do it too. All right, now we're just going to get out our gloss varnish and hit the whole model, get it ready for our wash. I like using gloss varnish because it lowers the surface tension on the model. And that way, when we put a wash in the model, the wash wants to flow into all the recesses. It doesn't want to settle on any big flat surfaces. So it's going to be really important for this model because we want our black armor to keep those highlights nice and clean so that we have a really good gradient on that black armor, keeping it look really good. And especially on our white shoulder pad field because nothing looks worse than a pure white shoulder pad field with a bunch of you know, dark wash stain all over it, just kind of messing it up. We don't want that. We're going to use the Army Painter system, uh, some quick shade wash mixing medium and dark tone and a little bit of water. And that's it. You're just going to mix those together and then kind of put it all over the model. And then this is really important. You want to always keep your brush moving so that you don't get these little lakes of wash pooling in spots. And then as you're doing that wash, just make sure that before it's fully dry, you wick away where the wash is pooling the most so that you don't have any globs of it drying somewhere you don't want it to. And then after that's dry, we're just gonna hit it with a matte coat, some matte varnish from Vallejo, just so we can keep painting on it because paint does not like sticking to that gloss varnish. It just makes your life really hard. So I always matte coat afterwards to make sure it's nice and clean. Okay, so now we're gonna start highlighting stuff. We brought the black gold back out to bring a shine back to our base gold surfaces. I wanna keep this kind of dark 
muted gold for the Black Templars, I think it works pretty good. So you can see I'm just kind of going over some of our harder edges with the same black gold. I'm not trying to fill anything in, we're just bringing a shine back, very lightly going over some of those bigger flat surfaces on the gold fittings around the armor. And for our metallics, we're going right back to the black metal from scale. Just going to find some places that we want that steel color to be a little bit shiny. So we're using the beveled edge of his big combat knife. That's going to be a little shined up to show that it's kind of ground into that cutting edge. And we're just going to go around and hit all the other steel stuff too, like the grenades and the gun and a little bit of the uh, kind of steel joints and that kind of thing around the armor. Just shine up those details. For the uh, frag grenade, we're going to hit the raised details of it with some flat green from Vallejo Model Color. You know, we don't want to overdo it because we do want it to still look like it's that kind of military green color. So we're just going to get kind of the uh, raised dimples of that pineapple shape, the pen, and the bottom edge. And for our plunger on the crack grenade, I'm going to flat red, just going to bring a little bit of that kind of really bright red onto that plunger on the hard edges just to pick it out a little bit more. Our second highlight on the leather is going to be mahogany brown. It's a brighter mid-tone brown. We're just going to go along on the big flat surfaces, highlight those up a little bit, and then it's ready for edge highlighting afterwards. And for our edge highlights on the leather, we're going to use Scale Color Iroko. It's kind of a light golden tan color. I'm just going to go around and get some of those edges, a little flap and the button on those uh, pouches. And then once the edge highlights are done, I'm just going to go in and you know scratch in some little texture marks on the leather just to kind of lock it in that it is leather. And for the edge highlight on the gun, we're using Prussian blue. It's a it's a brighter mid-tone blue that pairs with dark Prussian blue, of course. It looks really good together. We're just going to go around, use the edge of our brush to catch those hard lines, kind of pick out the little nuts and bolts and some of the hard lines on the, the gun furniture and get those details highlighted up. Now the edge highlighting for the armor. We're using neutral gray and with these new Primaris Marines, uh, at least in my opinion, less is more. So I'm not going to be edge highlighting every single little hard edge around the model. We're just going to pick out where I think we need an edge highlight on the brightest hard edges of the model, usually on the tops of stuff. So you can see it's going to be like the uh, top of those little thigh plates around the collar, uh, the tops of the knee pad, and those little plates on his feet. I'm just going to edge highlight those up. Trying to be uh, a little more on the subtle side with the edge highlighting. And we're just going to bring the buff back for our parchment, touch that up a little bit, get that aged parchment highlighted up just a little bit so that it's not super, super dirty brown. Really easy. And we're going to touch up the skull mask again with some buff, just kind of clean it up from the wash. Pick out those details. Not going to cover everything because we do want our details to stay nice and dark from the wash. We're just going to pick out some of the details with the buff to get, bring it back to kind of a neutral bone color. And from here, we're going to use some bone white from Game Air to really lock in that bone texture. and be a little bit more conservative with this color, still picking out the details, kind of those hard cheekbones, top of that little nose bridge, uh, kind of getting each one of those little teeth marks and around the edge of the chin to really pop out the details and lock it in as some bone. All right, for our hair, he's got black hair and I don't want to use gray, I'm going to use blue. Instead, you might have seen this little cartoony, little comic book, but I like how it looks. So that's usually what I do with dark hair colors, is I highlight them up not using uh, grays or whites. We're going to use blue on this hair. It's going to give us a really unique kind of look where his hair is like so black that it's actually, it looks blue. 
something you see a lot of in, in cartoons and comic books, and I think it kind of suits the 40k universe a little bit. So we're just going to lay that on really thin, um, just this side of not being a glaze on top of that black hair, and then highlight up the details of his hair with some regular old Prussian blue as kind of a glaze highlight, just getting out some of those hair textures and creating our little hair shine effect with it with that blue color. It's going to look really nice next to our black armor so he doesn't have a gray workup on the black armor and then a gray workup on his hair. So his hair is going to be different. It's going to look nice. Okay, we're going to go back to our base doing a dry brush with our chisel tip dry brush from slowfusegaming.com. This thing is really, really cool. I highly recommend getting one. Just going to dry brush up the textures on our base on that kind of concrete asphalt stuff as our dust color and then hit around the edges and kind of on top giving a little bit of texture to our dirty white tile and just get all that texture picked out and then we're gonna bring that up a little bit more with some Wolfland gray from citadel uh just kind of catching the hard edges around that tile creating some of that kind of gray white dust that you kind of see in uh, movies and uh, video games and stuff where crumbled concrete kind of turns into that gray white powdery dust. All right, and we're ready to put him onto his base. So I'm just going to take the pen from his foot and kind of make a teeny tiny little divot in the paint where I want that pen to go as kind of a marker for our pin vise. And I'm just going to use that to drill our hole and get it ready to put it on the base. So once your hole is drilled, uh, this is something I like to do. I like to take my hobby knife and kind of swirl it around inside of that hole to create a conical shape. Uh, you can also call it counter sinking the hole. There's uh, doing that in carpentry with countersink bits. Um, in putting models on bases, I like to countersink the hole because it gives a little bit more room for the super glue to kind of flow down in that hole and not want to squeeze out the top when you push that pin in there. So it's uh, a lot less messy and it, it uh, saves you some headache. So the pin just puts right in there, it's held in there pretty tight and that glue has a place to go. So he's gonna sit on there really nice and clean. None of that super glue is going to squeeze out from underneath his foot. And then we're just going to paint that base with some flat black. Get it nice and clean. I always do black rims on the bases. Um, you know, personal preference, different strokes for different folks, but I think bases always look best with a black rim, so that's what you're always going to see me do pretty much no matter what. It just looks nice and clean. Gives it a hard end to that texture on the base. Just looks really nice for display purposes. And then we're just gonna protect him with a little bit of matte varnish, just super quick. Uh, he's already been varnished a few times. The base hasn't been varnished yet, so I do wanna lock in that pigment from the dry brush, make sure it's not gonna rub off. And uh, it's just gonna protect the model and keep it looking nice for years to come. The paint's not gonna scratch off with this many varnish coats unless you really get on there with a fingernail or something and try to scratch it off. It's, it's going to be pretty well protected. And here he is, all finished. Uh, I know this is kind of a long one, but I wanted to show you start to finish on Black Templars. And you can use these not just for Black Templars, but for just about any black armor workup for any type of miniature. So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you like this, make sure to follow me on Facebook. Uh, Jack Club's painting for all of our social media stuff and make sure to check me out on Twitch. We stream four nights a week doing live shows, live tutorials. It's a ton of fun, lots of discussion, one-to-one uh, -one interaction. Twitch is just the place to be for miniatures painting tutorials so come check me out and I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>